An interesting component of the medieval battlefield is the concept that there were lots and lots of banners around, so people were showing off their colours. There's also the concept of furling banners and unfurling them. What does that actually mean? Well, when you carry a banner, a banner pole, it's quite awkward, and you wrap your banner around the pole itself, and that makes it easier to carry, and that's called furling. And I was doing some research into furling and unfurling of banners, and I found this fantastic rule of the Knights Templar. Now, of course, the Knights Templar have got a lot of nonsense spoken about them, but they were a real organisation, they did fight, and and they did have a specific set of rules. And there's a fantastic one here, Rule 165 of the Knights Templar. This is translated from Latin. The marshal should order the commander of the knights to carry a banner furled round his lance. There's all sorts of other things about it. And then it goes on to say, and this brother should not leave the marshal, rather he should keep as near to him as possible, so that if the marshal's banner falls or is torn or any misadventure befalls it, which God forbid, he can unfurl his banner. Or if not, he should act in such a way that the brothers may rally around his banner if necessary. So the order of the temple had banners there very specifically in the rule as a marking point on the battlefield. And banners being furled and unfurled is a component of that. But what does it actually mean to furl a banner or to unfurl a banner? And What's it like to actually carry one on horseback? Well, I'm going to go and saddle up and see what I can do with a 15 foot long late medieval banner that carries my own colours. Being a banner bearer on the medieval battlefield, especially in Western Europe, must have been a real honour and uh, only the most trusted and competent knights would have been allowed to carry the banner and obviously the position of banner bearer to the king would have been prestigious and much sought after however you weren't really allowed to fight with it so you kind of select yourself out as both a target and somebody who is incapable of moving freely on the battlefield or really fighting back one of the things that people talk about is a furled banner. Well, what exactly is a furled banner and what relevance does it have to the medieval battlefield? And is it easy or difficult to use? Let's try some experiments and see if we can understand a little bit more about banner carrying and a furled standard. So let's go and unfurl this banner where it's going to uh, be able to blow in the wind and see how awkward or otherwise it might be. Good boy, Warlord. First, we have to actually slightly untie it at the bottom. I've got it in a loose knot, very loose knot, otherwise it goes everywhere. So let's try and undo this. Good boy. There you go, right. No, 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 steady. So, Warlord is being a little difficult because there's a lot of wind and I've got this uh, stirrup cup that I can put the banner in, but let's try to rotate it round and see the full spectacular length of an ordinary medieval battle standard. Here it goes, this one this one is made of silk and it has <laughs> it has the arms of England and then my arms on it and then my badge and then my motto and my crest for my helm and you can see that that is quite a spectacular display of heraldic might and honour it's also surprisingly difficult to ride with it. So imagine being in armour on the battlefield and having literally dozens, if not hundreds, of banners like this unfurled and on display. This thing is about 18 feet long. That is the smallest size of a late medieval battle standard. The king's standard was much bigger than this. So me as a modest knight with modest retinue 
and modest amounts of income, I still get to have my banner carrier, my banner bearer, using this kind of magnificent battle standard. Good lad. Good boy. Come on, underneath it. Good lad. It's quite a few techniques. You've got to stay downwind to move around with it. And if you move the wrong side of your battle standard, you get it wrapped around you. And what must it do to the people behind you as well? So where did banner bearers actually stand relative to the king or to their knight? Well, I guess it must have been behind them, but they've got to be somewhere close because they actually physically mark the location of the battle leader. So this thing is going to get ragged as well. And if there's any kind of bad weather and there's going to be blood and mud later on, this standard is going to get filthy. Warlord here has obviously been trained with this flag. Well, not with this big one straight away, but with smaller flags. And so he's very used to it, which is another thing you have to train horses for. You have to get them used to this kind of flapping material. And as anybody that has their own horse will know, crisp packets and waste plastic bags can be a real scare for a lot of horses. So imagine hundreds of these on the medieval battlefield. So let me just try and furl this banner. This is obviously something I imagine banner bearers would have practiced. Um, just basically spinning it and it is using the wind. Luckily the wind's there. So it's blowing it around. And what I'm gonna do is put a little knot, very loose knot in the bottom just to stop it unfurling. I have no idea whether that's authentic in the slightest, but it seems to work for me. And it just holds the banner there. Right. Let's go for a canter, turn around, come back again, and see how difficult or otherwise that is to actually manage. Imagine galloping around on the battlefield and maneuvering. So, off we go. Come on, good boy. That's actually not too difficult at all. That's just like riding one-handed with a pole, with a lance. Really not difficult. Good boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll come back now. So, don't need to do a fast, fast canter, but it's a gentle one. Warlord's full of energy today. The wind makes them more uh, excitable. So, not particularly difficult actually. I'm kind of used to riding with pole arms and lances. So, it's not really much more difficult than actually riding with, well, just a lance really. It doesn't really uh, offer much extra wind resistance. It's a little longer. But, um, broadly speaking, that's completely familiar. Let's try um, unfurling this now, and let's uh, see what difference that makes to how easy it is to rise. I'm unfurling it with both hands, trying to do it quite quickly, actually, because I imagine when the signal came to unfurl banners, everybody wanted their banners up and out first. Right, there we go. There's the glorious banner. So let's try riding with this. Good boy. Ah, it's much harder, much harder. It's not impossible, obviously. Good boy. Let's try around this side. All right. Oh yeah, you've really got to use your arm. Oh, good boy. But it's very doable, but a little bit hard. Oh. But I have to say, banner streaming in the wind does give one rather a good feeling. Uh, so I can understand why they had them and uh, why they used them. Good boy, come on, up you go. Good boy, well done. He is very excited now. Good lad. So there you have it. Medieval banner, how to control it, what to do with it, and what it actually says about you on the battlefield. This is a mark of honor and location. And when you furl your banner, that means you're hiding your honor and hiding your location. And possibly you're saying, I'm not a threat. So only when you're about to charge, do you unfurl the banner, make a statement about your honor and charge into combat.
That was quite interesting because as we know the furled banner where the banner itself is wrapped around the pole was significantly easier to manage and handle uh, going up and down even at uh, quite speed even at full out gallop. Um, the uh, unfurled banner the thing that would when the trumpets went and everybody unfurled their banners to signal the charge became really quite unwieldy and you also had to have a certain amount of skill to imagine where the wind is coming from because if you turn downwind you get the banner wrapping around you and that would be very awkward especially if you had the king's banner for example or a great lord's banner that would be somewhat embarrassing on the battlefield if you were a banner bearer you are marking out your lord but you are a target as much as the lord is and you are key on the battlefield, you're a key location, you're a key point for rallying and for other people to control their formation. But almost uniquely on the battlefield as a type of soldier, you actually can't carry a weapon very effectively. You actually can't fight because in one hand you're controlling your horse and in the other hand you've got the lance or the pole that the banner's wrapped around. So basically if you want to fight, you can't really. Uh, you'd have to drop the banner, which is a no-no, and draw a sword or people would tear the banner from you. We know in the Battle of Bosworth that Richard in his final charge actually slew the enemy banner bearer. So we do know that banner bearers were deliberately attacked by the other side. So you relied on the team around you that, that were protecting the banner. So it's a bit of a mixed feeling I would imagine for some banner bearers. They're probably very proud to carry the thing on the battlefield, but also secretly I'm sure a few of them were a bit annoyed that they couldn't actually get stuck into the battle. Mm -hmm.